Well, I'm still playing Minecraft. Um, I I've come, I had kind of an idea whenever I was playing Minecraft, because that's what I usually do um, whenever I got nothing else to do. And uh, I was uploading the video, and I was thinking, you know, I could probably go off and play some Minecraft. And I did that for two, three hours. Um, I've got like four houses and now. Um, one's like off in this really wooded lot. Um, I mean, to have somebody as old as me talking really seriously about Minecraft, people think that is like somebody who's like really into his Legos. But even... You know, keep in mind, Rod Stewart plays around with um, with toy trains, and um, who is it, um, Demi Moore? She collects dolls. She's got doll houses, and so I'm I'm no different. I'm just somebody who who likes to play video games. That it's a it's a stress reliever. It's just the same as the professionals that are picking up the coloring books, and you know, coloring to relieve stress, because. Um, when you've got stress, it's going to affect your blood pressure, and you might get a stroke. Um, but, you know, there are these, these people that also have a stigma. Anything that their children are associated with, they don't want to be associated with. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's kind of like the inverse of what happens when a child grows up to, be, to go through puberty. They have to come up with their own identity, and then they don't want to be like their parents. So, but um, keep in mind that the children that are really adopting Minecraft are at that age that you really want to be involved with your children. And they're desiring that involvement. You know, that's the thing they keep talking about is, is that we don't spend enough time with our children. And we're thinking of that involvement of going to a football game. That is not the same thing. A football game is a that's kind of like watching TV with your children. It's, it's not interactive. It doesn't involve them, and you can't instill them values and morals and stuff in them by playing, by watching football or watching something, some movie on TV. Um, you can with Minecraft. With Minecraft, you can build houses. You can, you can create farms. You can and you're going to deal with this problem. Your children are going to start stealing diamonds from your chest. And then you're going to have to kind of tr teach them that you'd, stealing is wrong. That's, you know, you'll have all of this kind of um, discussion with them. And they might come up behind you and start hitting you with their sword and kill you and loot all your stuff and make, and make fun of you. And then you turn around and then you have a reason to go and paddle them in real life. You know, and don't do that. Now, you're not supposed to do things like that, and then you're able to do your your bit, your parenting bit, because, you know, and even if it was over Minecraft, at least you caught it now, rather than letting it fester someplace, sometime later on, and it happened in virtual. It didn't occur with actual money in real life. It occurred in a video game. And you have the opportunity to do that with Minecraft. So it is the thing that's under your nose that you're completely unaware of or concerned about. But you have the ability to be with your children in a, in a place that they want to be and um, to interact with them. And um, uh, keep this other thing in mind. If we ever do this virtual, we have virtual reality stuff. And they're using their cell phones, and they like, I mean, the older children, whenever they're doing their messaging, and, and say you, you have your family, you decide a family function is everybody's going to go into Minecraft, including the teenagers, and they got their cell phones. Um, in order for them to have a VR headset, say that if they don't have a VR headset, uh, in either case, they're going to not be able to message while they're in the game. And it'll force them to be for everybody to be there present and interactive, in interacting. Um, the one thing I found out whenever I went to um, uh, Alt Space VR, which is uh, owned by Microsoft now, it is one of the most common hangouts. If you're if you got a VR headset, and you can actually go and talk to people, a uh, voice and um, emote to them and, and point at pictures on the wall and do all the things that you want to do. And um, 
you can do in VR. And the thing about it is, is it drives people to use technology to talk face to face. And it is, and it, they're talking face to face in a format, uh, uh, in, in an area where nobody is going to feel threatened. So you could have, put this one on for size, you could have a white supremacist come up to a, a, a black or, or even a Muslim and actually discuss things. And they wouldn't feel threatened because nobody could kill anybody over it. And you wouldn't even have to know who the other person is. It's, you wouldn't even know the other person's actual name or where they live or anything. You could actually discuss your differences in virtual reality. You cannot do that face to face with video. You can, I mean, you could do it with audio, but who's going to do it and how you're going to know those differences and, you know, the thing is, is it permits people to come together and discuss differences and, and to, and to create realities and to share, you know, share things, virtual things, um, be virtually in the same place, not actually have to use, um, fossil fuels, you know, use, um, oil to, to drive your car or to fly a plane to some place and actually be there. And the other thing is, is if anybody is completely annoying in all space VR, you can just say, okay, uh, I'm going to choose to block this person, which may, basically means that you two could be in the same room. People could be talking to either of you, but you can't see either each other. And uh, the only way you would be able to is to unblock it. So if people don't tend to block each other, they tend not to. Um, only The only time they block them is when it's usually children. Their favorite thing to do whenever they in VR, and this is, this is disgusting, is they'll come up and they'll start making gestures against your crotch area as if they were masturbating you in real life. And um, they like to do that and they like to put their hands in front of your face. Um, that's their favorite things because they know the VR headset when people, t even in VR, whenever they touch your face, you feel like your t face is being touched. So it's, it's kind of threatening, but, um, after you've had VR for a, a long enough period and after you've been in all space VR, you come to realize all the thing tools you have in which to eliminate children from doing things like that. The good children, the ones that come to realization that they're kind of equals with the parent with the adults will come up and actually have discussions you know actually try to to think and actually try to interact and and be uh, adult like and you will have you will you'll have these um seminars they do in old space where they'll talk about the future and they'll talk about technology and stuff and Anybody's invited, including children, and you'll have somebody in there who's like um, who's like about nine years old, and and hat and is actually thinking pretty clearly and concerned about the future and thing, and will have a discussion with an adult and like actually be able to talk, even though they're not at the point where they can like actually talk you know really deeply about stuff they're they're kind of like oh you know i had this idea and you know so nine ten teenagers come in there and can actually talk face to face virtually but face to face because you're talking with your voice you're not using text you're not um um it you do get the feeling that you're talking face to face, even though you can't see each other's faces and you're not threatened. And so, and people are going to give you time to speak and they're going to, you know, even if they have a child there, sometimes they'll have children, they'll use voice changers and they'll go in there and you won't know if you're talking to an adult or if you're talking to a child. But, um, it opens up a lot of opportunity. A lot of people, whenever they think about virtual reality and then they think about children, they think about people who are going to be sexual predators who are going to, you know, try to get in bed with a child or something. Um, I've never experienced that in old space VR. I've never had that experience. 
um, there are, it's been positive. Um, I went to an LGBTQ plus meeting, you know, people who are, who are gay or, or transgender and all that. And when you're in VR, you get to be whatever you want to be, um, whoever you want to be. And there's, and they've removed all the sexual stuff that would be there. Um, unless you want a club where you want to have like pictures and stuff like that, you can, but, um, the general rule is that you don't get into that stuff. And in that, in, in that club that I've met at, um, they, they were really just trying to introduce themselves as being human and trying to get everybody to realize that they are, you know, they're people too. And there is a plus on the end of that community, and the plus means love. It also means that that you're you're not gay, um, but you're accepting of gay. And you're and I consider myself to be a plus. Uh, I'm not gay, but I am accepting of the gay community, and so I'd be considered as the plus on the end of the LGBTQ. And they offer that opportunity for people to be accepting of them. It doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is going to be is is going to be able to. Um, the the thing is is basically that um, you permit them to to be who they are, and that is who they are. Whether whether your religion tells you you can do that or not. Keep in mind that in the Christian religion, and I'll say this over and over again, it says, Jesus says to the Pharisees, he says, it'll be better on the day of judgment for um, the sodomists than it will be for you. And what he's really saying is he's saying self-righteous, because that's what the Pharisees were. They were self-righteous. They were religious. You know, they represented the... They represented the, the, the faith or of the Jewish people at the time, and they were telling people how to live, but they were living a completely different way. And um, Jesus was knew this, and he was telling them, it you know, and he and he put the people that they probably were you know most against the sodomists, and he said it'll be easier on the day of judgment for them than it'll be for you, because you've got so much more wrong with you than than you can ever perceive they do and i think jesus also kind of looked at them and said that this there's you know the psalmist got stuff wrong but um so do people who are adulterers and and i and i have a problem with porn i will say it right out and so that people don't you know start finding out and you know somewhere down the road and they say oh he's got a porn problem blah 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 and i'm saying yeah everybody in this if you if you look at the internet what is most successful on the internet pornography you know what's the oldest uh, the world's oldest profession prostitution it's always going to be a problem it's going to be a problem in the future it's and it may not even actually be that much of a big problem king david had um had 10 wives and uh, and his son Solomon had a thousand concubines. Um, the thing, the adultery that the Christian faith is really talking about is just kind of losing, kind of saying that you probably won't follow God anymore. That um, you would rather have a prostitute than have God, rather have a drug than God, rather than have some money than God, rather. Than, you know, build a big house and kind of ignore it and just not go to church. That's all adultery. Um, it's it's choosing just to pretend like God isn't there, that there isn't a good way of doing things in the world. And, um, and if you look at the people who are in the gay community, they're all about positive stuff. They're really trying to do the right thing, even though they know they can't really be um, heterosexual, they're always going to have an attraction for people of the same sex. And that's, the thing is, is I'm sure God is kind of looking at them and saying, you know, even though the world's not accepting them, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with where you're at. But I can't say that because I don't know what God's thinking. But I think that 
um, Jesus would, it would be like when the people were going to stone that woman and he said, you know, who here, who here without sin, uh, cast the first stone and they all left. Um, that's the same thing. So alt space VR is great for people who would feel threatened in real, in a real life situation. It's a great place to go and meet with people who, um, might not be the same, have the same views. It would be a great place for us, um, Americans to kind of determine what we need to do with our democracy, determine what we need to do with our country and stop being like, you know, cause I think we're going to, we're going to, we're going to poke fun at people at a distance, maybe on Facebook, but we're not going to come to them in reality in a, in a session where we don't have the choice to like very easily remove ourselves from the, from the, from the setting. When you're there with multiple people, you're under peer pressure to remain there and hear them out. Um, when you're on Facebook, you're going to put your message out and you can choose to read it or not. And that's not the same thing. Um, when you're, um, watching the news and you're watching something beat up on somebody who doesn't agree with your views, you're going to justify yourself, but you're not going to be, you're not really going to be listening to that other person. You're going to listen as far as, as they, um, as the news program will let them and then they'll cut them off and they'll have somebody who'll say something and then they'll beat up the guy because that's entertainment news. That's news entertainment. That's political entertainment. And that's what is what is bringing people in to sell the ad dollars, it is not solving the problem. To solve the problem, you need to get yourself a VR headset, go into all space VR and be with people who are not like you and kind of go to groups, you know, experiment. Go to a, a, a gay community group and hang out and, and just don't say anything about what it is, you know, just get to understand them and and be a part with and be with them and then you may come to realize that these guys are not as bad as you thought they were and then you're probably going to start having different opinions about the world and this is where actual change begins is when your thought when the things that you're the way you're vilifying everybody is not going to solve the problem you're going to have to change yourself and change the way that you deal with people and um you know there are people christians who who though they think that they're with everybody or they're not you know they're really kind of keeping themselves apart from all the people that are different from them and but then they they give money to foreign nations and stuff but they don't get involved they don't get personally involved with those people and um, alt spaces would be an easy way to do that and you don't even have to um, you don't ha have to leave your house you can stay in your comfortable environment do it and in interact with people you won't feel threatened they won't come out to get you and uh, and you over time you will you will develop an element of trust you might start building your own little worlds inside of alt space putting up pictures of yourself and, you know, being able to, to have more of a relationship with people in that space. Um, but Minecraft is the same thing, but with your children, you don't want your children to go to, to all space. I do not suggest that. Um, you want your children to not even be on the internet for that matter. Put them on a Wi-Fi router that isn't connected to the internet. Give them access to Minecraft. Um, give them access to a DLNA server that has good um, content that you approve of that they should watch, be able to watch. Don't give them access to streaming services because uh, they're going to get into the wrong stuff. I, I know this for a fact. It happened to me with my parents and their cable television. They would have their movie channels and their movie channels would have nudity on and when I got in contact with that, I got access to soft porn and then it just leads up from there. I, it would, 
it's not that I wouldn't have gotten into it, but I wouldn't have gotten into it as an early age as I have. And I can't imagine for the children these days having access to hard porn now, um, I don't see how they can do it. Um, cause I have at, cause everybody that's on the internet has access to the worst of the worst. And I didn't have access to that stuff until I was like 21 or 22. Um, and there are things in the Bible where it talks about, you know, the, the things that, that um, make you dirty. And that it's seeing those images will make you dirty. And we're already in it. And so there's like nothing that um, you can't you can't erase the images that you see once you've seen them. And our whole, our whole environment is being made worse as a result of just trying to say that pornography is, is freedom of speech. It's not. Um, it, is, it is going to happen. We're going to be able to get access to it, but we probably should legislate in such a way that the search engines, and they're going to work on this with AI to try to recognize nakedness and things like that but we need to legislate it so that it's out you know the picture that it, it you know the porn industry is going to be made worse by um making it more accessible they it it seems to be um it actually has made it worse it's gotten rid of all the magazines and stuff some people might see that as a great thing but the thing is is that now everybody has access to it and it's going to ruin it's going to ruin um, family relationships. It's going to make people um, experiment with it, and it may cause them to get a, a a disease or something, and get that in their family. And it's it's not a good thing. Um, it it depends on who you are. Um, I don't have a family, and I don't have a family because of that, but. Um, there are lots of other reasons why I believe that I got into it and it was really to protect myself from diseases. I just didn't see any reason to get involved with anybody because I was afraid I'd get a disease. So I just didn't get, I, it reinforced the, um, the behavior. And now I've got the problem, but it's just like cigarettes. It's just like drinking. It's just like anything else. And it just, as I said about adultery, um, um, there are other things that are adulterous and mine is not the biggest of them, but, um, everybody is, is just like that. Um, I, I love Cindy Lauper. She had this song she put out called she bop, you bop, we all bop. That's about masturbation. We all bop. And, uh, and she was really upfront about it. She put it out there and she didn't say masturbation. And, and the kids could play it and sing to it, but the parents knew it was about masturbation. So um, the kids are probably going to watch this video, and but they have access to the rest of YouTube. And YouTube's got all that stuff. And they're actually saying on YouTube that it, it is not a venue for children to have access to, even though they do have access to it. And it's because the parents are not really concerned about it. Um, that's fine. It... The thing is, is that it's, you don't want your, your young children, your six or seven, eight year olds to be having access to this stuff. Um, you want to let it, let them not like have access to it until like maybe they're 13 or 14. Um, when they're hitting puberty, cause they're going to, they're going to come in contact with you. You won't have any control over it. They will learn all the dirty stuff, but the, your seven year olds are learning the dirty stuff. I had a, a girlfriend and she would she was a librarian and she would she would tell stories and she told me that the the children would every now and play tricks on her and would would um, um, would bring up pornography on the computers and they thought it was funny and it drove her it drove her up the wall she couldn't imagine it just it was an emotional tragedy she couldn't imagine how the children would be like getting into this stuff at that early an age and you just can't imagine how what effect that would have later on in life when you're trying to trying to uh, actually have a, a relationship you know you can't have dating like it used to be it's now 
um, the first the the way people think about dating, I guess, is that you date one uh, after your first or second date, then you have sex, you know, and um, that's usually something you don't do until you're like actually going to get married, you know. Um, you could very easily get in a relationship that you don't agree with having sex by just having a baby, you know, and um, it's not. I don't, you know, it's it's just a sign of the times, and um, there were here, it, it was this way 40 years ago, it was, it's just gradually gotten worse, and um, even though i am still got the problem, I, um, it's, I just, you know, so anyhow, um, so the thing is, is there are ways to control your control um, how your children get access to things but you've got minecraft and minecraft don't have any sex in it um they don't have any any of that nasty stuff all it has is creepers it 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 gives children something to fear and it fear the creeper and uh and the, the creepers you don't know what drives them but they come up behind you and they blow up you know and there's not anything like really nasty about that and there's and you got your you got your um zombies and uh um you got all sorts of bad creatures in there but you're able to do something good and then it gives you an environment to a place where you can have family time with your family if if they desire to use games do it in minecraft uh, minecraft is is fantastic you can even teach uh, digital electronics in Minecraft because you've got redstone, and redstone permits you access to repeaters and and to logic circuits, and you could actually create a calculator, or you could create a car alarm or a house alarm, you know, uh, not a car alarm because there's no cars in Minecraft, but you could have a house alarm. You could create um, monster capturing devices, devices that'll capture monsters and kill them and and then you can get your um your um all your various sorts of stuff like bones from the skeleton dudes and you know that you need in order to grit make fertilizer so that you can grow your crops and and uh and grow trees there that's another thing about minecraft is that everything there you know there's so many things to do and it, te it it starts you off on actually learning stuff. Um, you can you can pretty much have bring back the tribal environment uh, that was lost with technology. When technology came, and with fire, we were able to evolve out of be from the tribal tribal area where we were talking and you know passing stories on verbatim and we didn't really have any written communication that's like comes after a while then you're able to write down what you, there are tribes there are um uh, um peoples out there who don't even have um don't even have a written language and they're only coming up with a written language now most of their their um communication has been verbal for a long time and um, people who work with these people know this is true my mom told me this this is uh, true of um, some missionaries that um, she's involved with um, say that there are certain places in the world where they don't even have a, a written language for their for their verbal communication and uh, so they don't have any way of really teaching each other anything more than what the tribal leaders can do and so but the thing is is with minecraft that is our way of getting back to that tribal experience we could go out and camp um but it, it, camping is a good natural way of doing this um but if you don't have the time to get away from work and you're in the office and you got your vr headset you can get your VR headset, get on your server at home with your children, 
and start and start um, playing Minecraft with them. Um, you can figure out some way to do that. I don't know exactly how to get that to work and, and not them have access to the internet, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. You could get into there and, and start playing Minecraft with them while you were at work. Um, you know, you had some time, you were between clients and, and whatever, and you had like half an hour or an hour to, to do something, eat lunch. And rather than eat lunch, you go into VR and spend it with your children in their environment and sit there and see what they created. And, and you can go out and maybe like, um, grow some stuff or something. And I, I think that is a, an animal at the door, but what it is, is it's sleep that's falling on my, on the door. Cause uh, I think we're having a ice storm right now. But the thing is, is that uh, Minecraft is 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 there for you. It is, and it is a good thing for your for you. It's your when your children want like something as much as Minecraft, and a lot of your children do, um, and they would be empowered by it if you could teach them digital electronics in Minecraft. For you to get involved in that's good for you because it's a stress reliever when you're in the city and you're in their business and you're between clients you can go there and and be with your children for an hour come back you feel relieved you you know where they are you know what they're doing because they're in minecraft making houses and having fun and uh and then um and uh it's not going to be that way for everybody, but I mean, for the ones that have Minecraft kids playing with Minecraft, even if your kids aren't work playing with Minecraft, try bringing them into it. I'm sure they'll 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 love it, and I love it. I'm a gamer. Um, it's the only game I play anymore. Is is Minecraft? I used to play Planet Side, um, Planet Side Two. I did it for. I had I funneled so much money into it. Um, I got a bad name for myself because I tend, when, when I'm in competition with people, I tend to be very, um, I, I want to kind of control the show and, um, I learned of ways to actually cheat at the game. Um, it wasn't that I hacked or anything. I used exploits. I used something called a, um called slingshotting that you do as a light assault and I would I would do funny stuff like I would um, there's a certain base on Indar in the center there's this the crater and it's got three springboards I can actually uh, change all the flags in less than two minutes using slingshotting techniques as a light assault and that's what I would do and it would drive people up the wall because they could They'd set a flag, and then I'd come in, and I would change it back. So the, uh, that's kind of my nature, is that um, I can drive people up the wall. Um, if I'm, if, if my drive is to win the game. And um, there are lots of people out there. And, and, you know, when you're a gamer like me, you understand tactics, and you understand um, how to use... Um, how to use how to use um, distraction to your advantage to make your team win. Um, you, there are things like putting it in your your opponent's face, um, being up near their base, attacking them as they come out so that they can't get the flags. That's one tactic. There's numbers of those um, of, of ways of dealing with things, and that's all. And when you play games like that, then you come to the realization that this is what people on the front lines, people that that are in politics, they all deal with things like this, but at a higher level and with different kinds of things. That it's it's all strategy. Um, you learn strategy, um, but over time, you it it's hard to make that fun. And um, though people claim that they that they they understand how to make that fun, it isn't fun. 
it's it's very destructive and uh, anybody who has played those games who's ever been uh, teabagged you know what teabagging is and if you know what a teabagging is and your your seven-year-old is doing it to you in the video game um, and they don't know what it is good thing they don't know what it is because it is a sexual reference it is something two gay men do to each other and it made its way into video games and now it's just so common what teabagging is that nobody even really remembers what uh, or some of the people just don't uh, the ki the kids uh, maybe don't know that it, it it's refers to a sexual act um, I'm not going to say what it is you can look it up if you want but um, it used to be when we play video games uh, Battlefield 2 we, they, they would say if anybody teabagged anybody, it, it was, you would get kicked out of the game. Now, and in, in games, it just happens so much that they don't even bother to control it because the idea that's associated with it is very, it's, 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 you know, if you were to kill somebody and then turn around and teabag them, that is a very, that's very, very crude, rude humor. Um, it is not funny. Um, it is not the way you treat a dead person and um, and when your children are taking on ideas like that and then somewhere down the road uh, you know bringing that into their world how can they even actually be good people after they've been been exposed to all of that you know so while video games don't make people go out and kill each other, they do make people more aggressive. And so it's not a good thing. So anyhow, uh, I have to get to 